Welcome back to the Naval News segment for today. Uh, today we're going to talk about the story that's sending shockwaves around the military uh, news sites around the world. Uh, China tested a fractional orbital bombar bombardment system that uses a hypersonic glide vehicle. This test happened in early August. A lot of people knew about it, but it wasn't really public knowledge. So we um, didn't really cover it here. But it's public now. And my email address is on the screen. Okay, there it goes, finally. Ignore that. <laughs> All right, this story from The War Zone. Author Tyler Rogaway says a report from the Financial Times, uh, Dimitri Sevastopol and Catherine Hilly states, China tested a nuclear capable hypersonic glide vehicle that goes into space to transverse the globe in an orbit like fashion before making a run through the atmosphere towards the target. Uh, there there would be huge implications if this if such a system were to be operational. And according to the story, which says it talked to five officials confirming the test. So they were absolutely sure that this did happen. The US government was caught totally off guard by this. And uh, again, this happened over a month ago. The trial flight is said to have occurred around August with a boost glide vehicle being fitted into being lifted into space on a Long March 2C rocket. The launch of the rocket was the 77th of its kind, uh, was undisclosed by Beijing, while the 76th and 78th were later, uh, the later of which occurred in late August. Uh, the Financial Times says that the test hypersonic glide vehicles missed the target by a couple dozen miles, but had hardly... That's hardly reassuring considering the capabilities that are apparent here. So what's happening is, is this very reliable rocket, uh, you know, Long, Long March 2C, and that's why they're saying how many launches that, that it's had, is putting uh, a device into basically low Earth orbit that, as it circles around the orbit, can then drop these uh, hypersonic glide vehicles. And we have some good trajectory uh, coming up that will show you the glide path that, that it takes. Uh, the, the, the capability here is... Um, pretty remarkable getting into orbit of course we've been doing that for a long time but employing these hypersonic glide vehicles from orbit uh just confirms that space is going to be weaponized it kind of already is uh, but they can put as many of these up in orbit as they want or they could just launch you know one body whenever they after they decide to attack and then it can be over the target in a matter of minutes uh, that's how fast these uh these bodies move. Uh, this is not your traditional slow orbiting space station like you see um, from the like the the space station that's up there. Now this is in low Earth orbit with a mission to get over the target as fast as possible, and then it releases this body that does that. All right, let's go back to the piece. The foundation of this Cold War era concept is commonly referred to as fractional orbital bombardment system or FOBs. The but instead of carrying traditional nuclear missiles, reentry vehicles, the Chinese system would carry a hypersonic glide vehicle that would possess immense kinetic energy upon reentry. Uh, as such, it would make a very long maneuver. It would, it would make a very long maneuvering flight through the atmosphere at a very high rate of speed to the target. And that's really what makes this so incredible: is that a ballistic missile is literally a ballistic trajectory that can be calculated, predicted, and intercepted. This thing maneuvers left, right, up, down, you know, all dimensions uh, on its way to the target. So uh, you cannot predict where it's going to be. You have to get an interceptor in there that can outmaneuver it, you know, by a factor of many, so that it can make adjustments as this thing tries to evade being hit. That's the new technology that we're talking about here. Uh, the FOBs concept of going back to the piece has long been concerned, has long been a concern because of the potential by to bypass not just missile defenses, but uh, even many early warning capabilities uh, compared to a traditional intercontinental ballistic missile. The FOBs can execute same strikes, but from highly unpredictable vectors. Range limitations also become a non-factor and the timing of an inbound strike is far less predictable, but at least the traditional FOBs ballistic missile system, some sort of uh, some sort of project projections could be made if the mid course orbital vehicle can be tracked, although that would be still a real cha challenge. Yeah, so like uh, for the United States, for North America anyway, we have a lot of our ballistic missile radars looking to the north over the North Pole, because that's where we expected attacks to come from, and some looking out towards the west and to the east. We have very few, if any, probably none, looking south. So if this orbital vehicle came from, the south, from a southerly direction, it's likely that we would not know about it in time to do anything about it. Okay, uh, back to the piece. It says, uh, that is not the case at all with the hybrid design, like the one being claimed to have been tested here, which would be totally unpredictable. 
Uh, the maneuvering hypersonic glide vehicle descended from high altitude at extreme speed could travel thousands of miles to a target, which would totally, uh, which can be totally offset from normal ballistic track. Uh, complicating things more, these systems can attack from the South Pole, not just the North, where most of America's ballistic missile, early warning and tracking and defense apparatuses are focused. Intercepting such a system would be very challenging, and uh, especially considering U.S. mid-course uh, intercept capabilities are focused on traditional ballistic flight paths, which fly more parabolic trajectory and generally have known ranges for each stage of flight because they're much more predictable. Yeah, this this uh, new capability that China has, or I should say is developing, because in the end, this thing did not hit its target. But the fact that it made this flight is a shot across the bow of everybody. China's in the lead now, guys, with these long fires. Um, with the glide vehicle endgame delivery system paired with FOBs, its vehicle can enter the atmosphere beyond range of any interceptor's uh, exo-atmospheric mid-course kill envelope. With the glide vehicle weaving its way through the atmosphere to its final target, traditional surface-based air systems line of sight is uh, significantly reduced by the hypersonic glide vehicle travels through the atmosphere. Paired with extreme speeds involved, this can be these can make these systems nearly useless at providing any details regarding the impending track. Hypersonic glide vehicles themselves are also very tough to kill with no real defense against them at this time. I've been saying that for months. Uh, elaborate defense concepts are in the works, uh, like the video we just showed you guys, but the effectiveness will depend on just how fast these vehicles are traveling, their maneuverability, the density and numbers and so forth, uh, what third party sensors are available and more. Uh, the hypersonic glide vehicle with the kinetic energy uh, in its favor from an orbital-like delivery would likely be the very hardest to kill. Yeah, because it's going to have a lot of energy coming in. So it can use that energy to maneuver and still have a, hunt, a lot of kill energy at the end, uh, even if it doesn't maneuver, especially if it doesn't maneuver. Okay, as we uh, have repeatedly noted, the Financial Times also recognized the eyebrow-raising comments of the U.S. Department of Defense officials recently on potential non-traditional delivery systems that could bypass America's strategic defense. All right, let's read from this quote from a U.S. Department of Defense official. Last month, Frank Kendall, U.S. Air Force Secretary, hinted that Beijing was developing a new weapon. He said China had made huge advances, including the potential for global strikes from space. He declined to provide details, but suggested that China was developing something akin to the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System, or FOBs, that the USSR deployed in part of the Cold War uh, before abandoning it. If you use that kind of approach, you don't have to use a traditional ICBM trajectory. Uh, it's a way to avoid defenses and missile warning systems, says Kendall. Uh, in August, General Glenn Van Herrick, uh, head of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, told a conference that China had recently demonstrated a very advanced hypersonic glide vehicle capabilities. Uh, he warned that China has the capability and would provide significant challenges against my NORAD capability. Yeah, because we don't have anything really to shoot this thing down, you know. It's really about early detection. You know, we got to be able to early you know, de detect it and get, you know, the GPI, which is the glide uh, something interceptor um, up into the up, up, in, up into the air. Oh, and Dr. Jeffrey Lewis, if you are interested in this topic, follow Dr. Jeffrey Lewis on Twitter. This man is amazing and he has a lot more gravitas in military circles than I certainly have. And he's saying a lot of what I've been saying, but he's got the credentials to, to back it up. And we'll get into him if you want to. All right, back to the piece. There's no shortage of concerns about China's nuclear building uh, buildup within the DOD. And like Moscow, it's only lo logical that Beijing would invest in delivery systems that circumvent U.S. early warning and defensive capabilities. The idea that at least some of the hundreds of supposed silos out in China's desert being built to house new ballistic missiles could one day be armed with a weapon like uh, this is very concerning. It also could be yet another major driver behind the Pentagon's push to deploy the whole new space-based early warning and tracking system uh, for hypersonic ballistic miss and ballistic missiles, including the capable cold layer tracking of missiles in their mid-course. That's really where we need to take the next steps de defensively from, uh, from the United States perspective is this uh, mid-course strategy. That's, that's really, if we can't catch it in the boost, we have to catch it on the terminal. That mid part, we don't have a lot of capability up there. And it's not that we don't have a missile that can't reach it as much as we don't have a missile that can catch up to it during that part. And the sensors, um, you know, unless we got the Aegis fa facing the right direction, we're not going to be able to see it either. So 
you know, we, we try to catch them in the boost phase, which is when they first launch. And then if we don't do that, our plan right now is to catch them in the terminal phase. But you don't want to wait that long, especially if you have overwhelming numbers coming at you. You want to be able to get all three phases, all stages of these launches. So Dr. Jeffrey Lewis, I'm not going to read his tweets, but you can definitely check him out on Twitter. A very credible person. And I believe he speaks the truth. Uh, that layer, going back to the piece, that layer would be absolutely essential in trying to defend against fobs. That is if a defense at all is actually feasible or even strategically sound we are not talking about a rogue state here with a few advanced ballistic missiles he's referring to north korea there i believe uh, china would be able to deploy dozens or even hundreds at once and we're not we're not going to be able to shoot down that many at a certain point kinetic defense uh against such capability is just a losing proposition and very costly yeah, he's right. So I don't want to read the whole piece word for word. Definitely check it out. Go to the drive uh, forward slash the war zone. And they have lots of military news there. Very good story written by Tyler Rogaway. Brand new capability. Um, a lot of people have, can, have compared this to Sputnik. This is a Sputnik moment for uh, the military industry complex. Uh, a few uh, people out there have compared this to 9-11. This is the drastic change that we, th this is the event that's going to convince people that we need to spend more money uh, fighting against this technology or to be able to defend against it and also have the capability ourselves. Now, we've demonstrated that we have the ability here in the United States to um, have a hypersonic glide vehicle. We have one now that works it passed the test, uh, but there's only a couple tests. We don't have a lot of data on it, and it's certainly not in the fleet. So uh, China is definitely in the lead on this. So let's go to the chat. Let's see what you guys know. You guys got any comments about this? Uh, it, it's a real eye-opening moment. This is a moment. This is a pivot point in history for military weapons, and China got there first. John says uh, every weapon system has an Achilles heel. Uh, it's just finding it and exploiting it. Right. So right now, the Achilles heel in this thing, uh, from my in my opinion, my amateur analysis, would be its launch delivery uh, vehicle, like. They can only launch those uh, Long March 2C rockets from fixed positions, erectors like we have at Cape Canaveral, right, where we put rockets up into space all the time, and Vandenberg Air Force Base over in California. China's got the same location. So obviously, if we take those locations out, they won't be able to launch this FOBS concept. But the hypersonic or long-range fires isn't limited just to those uh, rockets. This is just one working example. Uh, they, they can also put this on a ballistic missile like North Korea has done. And while that ballistic missile is parabolic, as soon as it detaches the warhead, that warhead, this hypersonic glide vehicle is not parabolic. So you have to catch those in the boost phase if you want to shoot them down. Satellite-based defensive weapons, that's where what we're looking at doing. According to this piece, we're going to put uh, mid-course tracking up in space first. And then with that is implied, but not stated, uh, I want to make that clear that we would weaponize that as well. That that's just an implication. It's not because traditionally going back to the space race of the 1960s, there was a gentleman's agreement that we would not weaponize space. If we ever landed on Mars, we would not claim it. It is humanity going out into space together as one. But uh, the reality is that's not happening. Yeah. Scott QC says there are no viable means of jamming these things. Well, they don't have any sensors, as far as I know. They just have a target and they go to it. Yeah, I don't know much about how, what kind of sensors they have on that. I guess they have to have some some sort of GPS guidance. It, the, the thing has to know where it's at, but that could all be internal as well. Yeah, Return of the Star Wars program. Yeah, except now we actually have the technology to make a Star Wars program, whereas in the 80s, it was a bit of a pipe dream, in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to counter this... Uh, this week, uh, the United States, we commissioned another littoral combat ship. 